Edinburgh in history is a city synonymous with beautiful buildings, history and incredible stories. For example, it was within the Scottish city that infamous murderers Burke and Hare operated, killing 16 people and then selling their bodies for profit to surgeons to perform medical dissections. It was also the setting for one of the craziest executions to have ever taken place in history. Margaret Dixon was a lady who was rather outspoken in a time where this was not expected, and ultimately she found herself at the gallows with the hangman's noose wrapped around her neck. However, things did not go as they were meant to that day in the grass market in Edinburgh. So join us today as we look at the crazy execution of Maggie Dixon, Edinburgh's half hang it Maggie. And remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Maggie Dixon was born in Musselburgh in around the year 1702 and was brought up in a small Scottish town. She later married a fisherman, however in 1723 her husband deserted her, possibly being forced to join the navy, and Maggie left the city moving south to Kelso, nearer the Scottish border. She then began to work in an inn in the town, and soon became pregnant with the child of the innkeeper's son. This greatly worried Maggie, and she greatly feared being evicted out of her home, being made unemployed, and then being brought in front of courts for having a relationship with another man, despite being married. Because of this, Maggie concealed the pregnancy, and she tried to do this for as long as possible. However, her child was born premature, and it's not entirely clear if the child was a stillborn or died a few days after birth. However, Maggie decided to do something that would bring about her potential downfall. She decided to leave the baby by the banks of the River Tweed, and it's possible that she intended to throw the baby into the water, but could not do so. Shortly after this, the baby's corpse was found by locals, and a doctor examined the body, and confirmed that the child had been alive when it was killed, even though for a small amount of time. Now it was quite easy to trace the mother down, and Maggie was quickly arrested and taken to Edinburgh for trial, after a local magistrate was told of the events. Initially, Maggie was charged with the concealment of a pregnancy, but after the doctor's examination, she was charged with homicide and murder of her newborn child, which was of course a much more serious offence. She stood trial against an all-male jury, and after evidence was put forward against her, she was quickly found guilty. The judge who presided over the case in Edinburgh then had no choice but to sentence Maggie Dixon to death, for her to be executed by hanging. Maggie was then taken to the grass market on September 2, 1724, to be hanged in Edinburgh, and at this time she was around the age of 22 or 23. The grass market was a traditional place where public executions took place, and today it's found within the old town of the city. As was usual at the time, there was a large crowd that gathered there that day, intent on seeing the final minutes of Maggie Dixon's life. The crime she was convicted of, killing her child, was incredibly serious, and no doubt there would have been people there, calling Maggie a witch. However, it would be a day that no one in the crowd would ever forget. The hanging of Maggie Dixon did not go to plan, and she would not be killed that day. Some sources state how Maggie was allegedly friends with the rope maker in the city, and that this could have helped her fate, and others say how she could have been friends with the executioner, a man called Jock Dalgleish. Legend states that the hangman that day tied the noose around Maggie's neck looser than was sufficient, and that she could get her fingers through it to stop it tightening around her throat. A conversation could have taken place between Maggie and the executioner, either on top of the ladder where she stood before she was pushed off and hanged, or it could have taken place in her cell beforehand. So Maggie was stood at the gallows in the grass market, on either a ladder or a bucket, with the noose around her neck. The executioner then gave Maggie a quick shove, and she was left to be hanged. It seemed that this was the end of Maggie Dixon, hanging at the gallows in the grass market in front of thousands, However, what happened next was also rather crazy. There was a mad rush after she was left hanging for 30 minutes, and there was almost a riot. There was a rush from medical students and Maggie's friends and family, all fighting over her hanging body. The medical students wanted it for dissection, as was allowed as murderers could be dissected, and her family wanted to give her a proper funeral. In fact, a number of people even pulled down on her legs, which would in a sense quicken her death. Medical students were suffering a shortage of bodies to experiment upon, so there was regularly fights at executions between medical students and the relatives of the condemned. 
the bodies of convicted murderers were legally allowed to be claimed by them as well. However, Maggie was not dead. Maggie's friends managed to win over the medical students and they quickly placed her into a coffin before taking her on the back of a cart back to Musselburgh for a burial. While she had disappeared, a soldier noticed that the hangman had left a short length of rope attached to the gallows and this was strange as people would often steal the rope as it was considered lucky. The group of friends who took the body stopped inside a pub for refreshments, leaving the coffin outside, but it's possible that it was guarded. It was said in some accounts that the coffin was placed in front of a window, however at some point the coffin lid moved open and a small moaning came from inside the coffin. Swan nearby then also heard the noise and removed the lid completely, and inside the coffin was Maggie Dixon, who then sprang back into life. A surgeon then examined her, and she made a full recovery, less than an hour after being killed in front of thousands of people in Edinburgh, and amazingly she left the coffin and even walked back home. When she arrived home, her husband who had left her previously was there, and they allegedly rekindled their relationship. Her resurrection was seen by many as having divine intervention, that she was saved by God or some spirit, and she was not hanged again. Under Scottish law, her punishment had been carried out by the executioner, so she could not legally be executed again for the same crime, and she began to be referred to as half hang it Maggie, and became somewhat of a curiosity. To rub salt into the wounds, Maggie even allegedly was seen back in the grass market where she was hanged, drinking, and today there is a pub that marks her name, near to the spot where she was hanged. So the story of Maggie Dixon and her execution is an incredibly crazy one that saw the young lady hanged until almost dead and then somehow survived her botched execution. Some sources allege that she lived another 40 years and she lived into her mid-60s. However, the story of half hanged Maggie is a rather strange one and today remains ingrained in the lore of Edinburgh's past. And what better way to commemorate her than naming a pub after her? Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.